In this video, I want to emphasize a little bit more on the concept of returns or yields. This is a very important concept because when we are comparing investments, oftentimes we compare what kind of return we can get from a particular investment. For bonds, the investment, um, again, is based on the price you pay for it today, which is the present value, and all the future cash flow. So the return that is oftentimes reported and the, and the return that is oftentimes cited on the bond is the yield to maturity. The yield to maturity, as we described earlier, is the promised return if the bond is held by the investor at, until maturity and the fact that the issuer makes all promised coupon payments and future face value. So this is what is based on the contract um, issued by the company and also based on the investor assuming that at the time of purchase, he or she has intention to hold on to the bond until it matures. However, events may happen such that either the company does not continue to make payment or that the investor may decide to sell the bond early. Uh, what would be the return be under those circumstances? Well, one very common uh, scenario is that a bond may have a callable feature. A callable bond, um, as described in the different types of bond characteristic, is the provision that allows the company to call the bond, meaning they can pay off the bond ahead of its maturity date. So if you think of it as a personal finance topic, that will be uh, equivalent to um, paying off your mortgage early or paying off your car loan early. And companies oftentimes will take advantage of that if interest rate has gone down, just like a homeowner will refinance his house at a lower interest rate when that becomes available. So if a company has a bond that give them that option, the option to call or prepay the bond early, an investor should be aware of that. So this is the potential return if the return if the bond is called as soon as it becomes callable and the issuer makes all the promised coupon payments until that time and also the call price. So typically um, a bond with a callable feature will allow the company to prepay investors. However, they may have to pay a price higher than the par value. So the call price is oftentimes not the same as the face value. Notice that the only main difference between computing the yield to maturity and the yield to call is uh, two things. One is the future value, one is the face value of the bond, one is the call price. And the other is time. So for the time to yield to maturity, the time is maturity date. And for the yield to call, the time is as soon as it becomes callable. So those are the two items that affects the uh, difference in the yield is the size of the future value and the timing. Lastly, we want to introduce the concept of holding period return. This is the actual return based on the received coupon payment and the bond price at the time of sale. So again, the coupon payment amount is the same uh, regardless of the three scenario. However, in the holding period return case, the selling price will be the future price. So this is when you sell the bond and the time, of course, is the time of sales. So the method for computing all these returns is the same, but the timing is different and the size of the future value is different. Let's take a look at an example to see how we will compute all these different yields. Let's say we have a 4% semi-annual coupon bond with 20 years to maturity and is currently selling at this bond is also callable. It's callable after five years, and the call premium is one year's coupon. So let's unpack this information. First of all, let's look at the basic bond itself. The basic bond itself, we can um, we can unpack this information and get the uh, timing of the cash flow and the size of cash flow for this bond. It is a four year, a four percent semi annual coupon bond. That tells us that the coupon payment is $40 per year and is $20 every six months. We are not given the face value of the bond 
um, we can assume that the face value of the bond is $1,000. The bond has 20 years to maturity and is currently selling at $1,050. So the price today, which is the present value, is $1,050. $50. So these are the facts of this bond and these facts will not change regardless of um, what we are analyzing um, for this bond. First, let's compute its yield to maturity. We know that to compute yield to maturity, we need the four factors. We need the present value, which is the price of the bond, the coupon payment, which we determined was $20, and we use the face value and the time to maturity. It has 20 years left to maturity, so we have 40 payments left. So that's how we get $40. And again, the future value is always the face value or the principal of the bond. And given this information, we can compute the yield to maturity. It turns out to be 1.82% every six months. So on a multiply that by two, we get 3.65% percent every year. However, since this bond is callable, when you buy this bond, you may be concerned that the company will call the bond as soon as, as, soon as it becomes callable, and your return may be different from the yield to maturity. So let's take a look at what is this yield to call. Now when we look at the yield to call, first remember that two things did not change. The, the price of the bond is still $1,000. $50. So this first part does not change. The size of the coupon payment also doesn't change. The size of the coupon payment remains $20 every six months. So those two variables do not change. What will change is the phase value and the time to maturity because when the bond is called, is callable after five years, not after 20 years. So the time to call will be five years or you'll receive as, as little as 10 coupon payments and the bond will be called. Next is how much money will you get if the bond becomes callable? The call premium is one year's coupon. One year's coupon, we already figured that out, is $40. So in other words, you're gonna get $40 over and above the $1,000. So if the bond is called, you'll get $1,040 instead of just $1,000. So that becomes our cash flow. Again, the price remains the same. The coupon payment size remains the same. The future value here is now the cash flow you'll get when the bond becomes callable. And the bond becomes callable after five years. In other words, you get 10 coupon payments. And we are computing the interest. So the calculation is the same, but the information you get is different. So here, when you compute the U to call, it turns out to be 3.63% every year. So those are the two potential returns we may get by buying this bond. So the first potential return is the yield to maturity, which is the return you'll get if the company makes all its payment and you hold on to the bond until it matures. Uh, the second case is when the company actually exercises callable option as soon as the bond becomes callable. And this is the return you'll get, and we call that yield to call. Now let's take a look at a hypothetical situation where the invest someone actually bought this bond and it bought, it paid the ten uh, the one thousand fifty dollars, but this investor did not hold on to the bond for twenty years, nor did it hold on to it for five years. This investor sold the bond after only three years, and he was able to get one thousand twenty five dollars for it. What is her holding period return? So again, the payment, the price of the bond is the same. She paid $1,050. She will get the coupon payment of $20 because that's what the bond is. But she only get six of those payments because she hold on to the bond for only three years. And she get $1,025 when she sold the bond. So her holding period return is can be computed as follows. The price is the same. The coupon payment is the same. What is different here again is the future value. So when we are computing the holding period return, the future value is the future selling price. 
and the time period is how long they hold on to the bond for. So this should be six. And when we compute the interest, we get 1.52% every six months or 3.04% per year. So notice that the calculation method is always the same when you're computing the interest rate or the yield. The input variable dictates what results you get. So to summarize, the present value when we compute this different return is always the price of the bond is typically an outflow. And the coupon payment also remains the same. And this is typically an info. The other two elements will change depending on what you're computing. For the U to maturity, M will be the time to maturity. And the future price of the bond or the face value or the future value of the bond is the face value if you hold on to the bond until it matures. When you're computing U to call, the end becomes as soon as when the bond becomes callable. So that time period varies. And the future price of the bond is the call price. And the call price typically will be the face value plus some kind of call premium. And each bond uh, has a different contract. The most common one is a one-year uh, coupon payment. When you're looking at the uh, holding period return, um, you, the time is how long you actually hold on to the bond for, so at the time of sale. And the future value is the future price that you can sell the bond for at some point in the future. So the, once again, the price today doesn't change, the coupon payment doesn't change, but the duration and also the future value changes depending on what you are computing. Since all of these are returns, you're always computing the interest. But depending on your input, you, the answer may be the yield to maturity, maybe the yield to call, or it could be the holding period return.